I played 200 Days of Dinkum. When I made that first video, I didn't know how many people would enjoy it, but I am blown away by how many of you asked for a part 2. So here it is! Before that though, if you haven't seen the first 100 days, you're gonna want to check that out first before getting into this video. This time, I got some goals going, mostly suggested by the comments, and these are the ones I went with, so thank you all for your suggestions. Oh, also, the newest update, the housewarming update, came out a fair way through recording this, so you'll see some of the features in this video, but yeah, anyway, here are the goals that we came up with for these 100 days. Number 1. Get 5 hearts with all residents. Number 2. Meet the remaining unknown NPCs. Number 3. Trap and send off one of each colour diggo. Number 4. Fix all the tele towers. And finally, number 5. Build a big enough farm for the tractor. This video took me over a month to make, so I'd love if you could show some support with a little like and subscribe maybe? Anyway, without further ado, here we go! On day 101, I started by watering my crops, and sort of just getting my bearings again before going out bug catching and banana picking. I had a request to do for a photo of a specific location, so I snapped a photo of this local jellyfish and stole an egg on my way home for some extra cash. I showed Theodore the photo he asked for, and in return he gave me 12,000 dinks. This went towards clearing the town debt on day 102, so that I could relocate Franklin's lab, but before doing that, I decided to commission a motorbike from him. I stuck the lab in the new spot I planned from the last 100 days, before heading out to hunt for a monarch butterfly because one of the townies requested it, but returned empty handed as I couldn't find one anywhere. Instead, I focused on the requests I could do for friendship gain, like these ones where they just sell you clothing. I did also buy this stylish lamp from Melvin Shop which I thought was very… uh… stylish. Yep. <laughs> that evening, whilst out looking for more bugs, I happened upon that monarch butterfly, meaning we didn't lose our friendship with Franklin, and he gave us the head recipe. This was a huge deal, I've been waiting for this for a while. On day 103 I received my motorbike in the mail and immediately took it for a test drive. It became clear to me that I'm gonna need some practice here. Sally was visiting, so we went to say hi for the first time in this 100 days and she sold us some boots. I caught a new bug the day before so I donated it to the museum for my 100 permit point reward, selling the rest of my junk to John for 28 grand. This funded my next mining pass. For the afternoon, I wanted to take care of one of my main goals of restoring the towers, so I swerved my way over to the west of the island, though I did have to swim some of the way because bikes don't swim. For now, I was just here to check what materials we'll need, returning later in the evening and fixing the south tower and the west tower. Day 104 was a day full of village errands, because if I wanted any hope of reaching 5 hearts with everyone who lives here, I had to start right now. Once those were taken care of, I started extending the town plaza as I thought the bank would be a good fit for this section, bringing it all the way out by the animal pens. I couldn't go and pick up the deed today as Fletch was already leaving, but at least I could clear the town debt. Instead, we began work on another goal of catching one of every colour diggo, which I believe there are three. I made a few iron animal traps and placed down another collection point as I hadn't replaced the last one I destroyed. I found my first colour diggo close by, and it's pretty easy to push them into the traps, but it doesn't take them long to break free so I just had to trap it over and over again until I reached the collection point. What was weird is that when I got to the collection point, I sort of missed the proper landing, and then when the diggo broke free, not only did it duplicate, but it was stuck. It couldn't move or be trapped. I went to sleep to see if that would fix it, but on day 105, we still had that awkward mutant looking diggo stuck in its place. So there was really only one thing to do here. Poor things. Let's try and forget about that and move the bank instead setting it down in the area we set up yesterday. Sally was here today, and we were still trying to increase her friendship and convince her to move in, so I told her I'd catch a butterfly. In fact, I was so determined with all the friendships that I actually went fishing! By the time I got back to town, I caught a whole nine fish in one sitting. What's gotten into me? It wasn't till the evening that I remembered about my crops today, so it was at this point I realised the big onion field was ready. Except for this lonely one that Clover watered. The green beans were ready too! By the time I finished that and got the watering done, John's was closed. We couldn't sell anything just yet, so I crafted some hedges to decorate the plaza with. I also wanted to use these for a boundary to my backyard, but unfortunately these don't connect with the ones attached to the house so I'll have to have a rethink. Day 106 was a Sunday, so I still couldn't resell my stuff. All these fish in my pockets were starting to create a funky smell, so I placed them in some tanks for the day so I had space for our first mining trip of the video. This time, I brought the motorbike with me, Although I did have some trouble navigating around all the rocks and stuff, 
But the reason I brought it is because you can put as many fossils or gems on the back of the bike as you want without having to keep returning to the elevator. I did however run into a little bug. The bush devil knocked the bike down which dropped the fossil on the floor, but when I went to get it back I literally couldn't pick it up at all. It just wasn't letting me, I don't know why. Luckily I shortly found another one, but in trying to run back I got burned to death and crushed by that fossil, then ended up respawning with it in the elevator anyway. A very expensive shortcut. I made up for it by the end of the day by finding 4 rubies, but without the bike because it seemed to just hinder me personally. I just suck at driving that thing. My post mining selling spree netted me about 550 grand on day 107. I then thought about replanting the big field before realising we were close to the end of the season and changed my mind. I decided to prep for summer instead by making this field 100 tiles as previously intended, and having a separate 50 tile field for other crops. But of course we can't do anything without being attacked by a wary. I decided to take revenge by trying to trap it, and like any other feisty animal it was a bit of a pain, but I did eventually manage to send it on its flight. The buildings were all now in their final spots, so I took the opportunity to fix up the paths. On day 108, Milpin gave me a wooden chair in the mail, so I added it to the random dining table collection. I harvested some potatoes and grabbed a couple of eggs, which I immediately sold all of to John. This meant I got the journal achievement for selling over a thousand crops. I really wanted more permit points to upgrade my farming license, so I was looking through my journal to see if we had any close milestones, when I noticed this one saying we had two out of three house upgrades. So I sprinted straight into the town hall to get that upgrade, but nope, it still doesn't exist yet. Gutted. What we could do was buy two more chooks, one named Dora Explorer, <laughs> no, no. and one named Hennifer Aniston. <laughs> this scored me 200 more permit points, allowing me to obtain farming license number three. I was so ready to upgrade my tools. This meant I could now buy the irrigation license of sprinklers, so those are the next things to grind for. I then spent the rest of the night… fishing? Then I bought the bug book which can identify bugs in the wild. Whoa. On day 109 I harvested my sugarcane and tested out my new watering can, which now waters 6 stars instead of 3. I still can't wait for sprinklers though. Whilst doing the rounds with the villagers for the day, I spotted this red nose which I just had to buy for a few seconds of amusement then went and handled my permit point dailies. Since I was carrying around a fair amount of money, I deposited some more into the bank. With a balance of now over 2 million, we'd hit another journal milestone. Every million you deposit gets you another 3,000 permit points, so being rich is becoming a priority. This meant I could now grab that irrigation license. On checking the recipe, the main thing I was short on was quartz, so I had to venture out to find some, and in doing so found this opal node which I'm pretty sure is super rare. After a successful gathering trip, I crafted my first 8 sprinklers, which I placed in the greenbeard field to test them. This made me realise how much metal I was going to need, so I bought another furnace to speed things up, then spent the rest of the day smelting copper. On day 110, I harvested my green beans and didn't water them because I had the sprinklers, not realising you also need a water tower to make them functional. Oops. My 98 green beans sold for 37,000 dinks using this cash on commissioning a weather station from Franklin, because one of the NPCs we've yet to meet will only show up in the rain. I randomly checked my pedia to notice that I'd caught but not donated the dust corker dragonfly, so now I only have a couple of days to do this before having to wait for fall, but because I had the bug book, it didn't take me long to find one. Catching one, however, was a bit more of a struggle. Now all the bugs I've caught are definitely in the museum. On day 111, I received the weather station, which I thought would fit well by the greenhouse. I went ahead and tested it out, to find that tomorrow had a forecast of rain so we should get to meet one of our mystery NPCs. Our recycling bin today had a bottle brush seed, which I didn't know existed, so I planted it by the museum for an easy access source. I wanted to start early on one of the big goals, so I initiated Project Tractor by clearing space for the larger field. The compactor was very handy for this, and I used up any paths I had in the process then began fencing off the area which I planned to be 30 by 10 tiles. It was raining on day 112 which meant we had a mysterious visitor off the coast. To get there in one piece I crafted a rowing boat and row row rowed my way over there. Here I met Jimmy, he was convinced he's better than John. This guy won't be able to move to the island and I don't think you can befriend him either, which is fine because I'm not sure I like him anyway. The first thing I noticed is that he was selling a hang glider. He only sells things for permit points, but I thought this was worth the sacrifice. He'd also buy things from you for double the price, but only if he's selling bulk of over 50, and I didn't have anything right now. 
Work on the big field resumed on day 113, as I wanted to get this planted soon for more farming XP. But of course, this can't be done with an incomplete perimeter fence because we don't want our crops to get munched on. Once rain opened shop, I went in and grabbed a buttload of seeds for the new season, which meant this entire day was dedicated to planting and watering, and managed to get a few more sprinklers for the new tomato area. For today, I only ended up dealing with the fields this side of the river. The next morning, I realised my error with the sprinklers and finally crafted that water tank. This thing is quite large, so I plopped it behind John's shop. We'll get to test the sprinklers tomorrow, but what is handy is being able to fill up my watering can there. All these sprinklers meant I was now low on ores, so I went surface mining for the morning. That afternoon, I bought a whole load of onion seeds because it was now time that I get around to planting the new giant field. Except when I was almost done with tilling, my hoe kind of broke, and rain closes at four. I drowned my sorrows in grilled bananas and stormed off home. Theodore asked me to catch a stingray. I'd not even seen one of these before, so I decided to oblige his request. Luckily, I'd recently obtained the fish book, which makes things infinitely easier. The question marks indicate a new fish, so our chances were pretty good. Lo and behold, it was indeed a stingray. I then went ahead and caught another one so I could donate one to the museum. On day 115, I noticed my sprinklers working for the first time. But the radius doesn't reach the ones closest to the gates, nor does it reach the green beans, so I'll have to water these by myself, as I didn't have anywhere else I wanted to put a water tank around here. I donated that stingray from yesterday before grabbing the next irrigation license for 4,000 points. This meant I'm now able to buy the agricultural vehicle license for the tractor. The permit point grind is endless. I wanted to try and commission the tractor so I had it ready for when I could get the license. But obviously, you can't buy the tractor without the license. What was I thinking? I left empty handed but then filled those hands with a brand new hose so I could get to plant in that new giant field. Until I get the advanced sprinklers, this is going to take me one heck of a long time to water every single non rainy day. A hungry Sally was here on day 116, so I gave her some bananas, and in return, she gave me the recipe for an animal feeder, which is great because now I don't have to buy them. But let's be honest, I'm too lazy and I'm just going to keep buying them anyway. I chatted to her again to see if she would move here, but she's still playing hard to get. I then spent the morning doing villager requests, both for friendship and for permit points. I decided to chill out a bit that afternoon by collecting some shells and looking out for any new fish, digging up any treasure spots I could find, one of which uncovered an amber, pocketing 44,000 dinks. Day 117 began with finding a brand new fish which turned out to be a tarpon. I also found a couple of underwater critters too, all of which I donated to the museum. These gave me enough permit points to grab the first agricultural vehicle license. So I made haste straight to Franklin's and asked him to build one for me. This made me feel confident, so I went and checked the town awards. We were doing great at four and a half stars, and our economy was booming. Not like the real world. I ended this day by watering my crops because, surprise surprise, I'd forgotten till now. On day 118, Franklin somehow crammed a tractor into my mailbox in an act of what I can only call genius engineering. And when I went to thank him, he sold me some green pants. After doing a few little chores, I unleashed the pocket tractor. I couldn't have been more excited, but for now, I only had the harvesting attachment, so there was nothing to test it out on yet. I headed out to the pine forest to collect some bottle brushes for a shipment request for Theodore, handing them over to him that evening for almost 17,000 dinks. On day 119, it was time to take on our first alpha of this 100 days, but I decided to allow myself to wake up a little bit first by tending to my crops. Very slowly, I prodded that jackaroo to death, and celebrated by going bug catching on my way home. By the time I got back, I pretty much wore out my bug net, so it was time to pick up a new one, then collected my reward for the battle earlier. The alphas were on a bit of a rampage because on day 120 there was now an alpha bush devil here to wreak havoc, but first I wanted to say hi to Sally, just in case we didn't make it back home, even going out of our way to catch the fish she asked for. Now it was time for battle. Thankfully, it was right next to a tower tower, and I now think that the alpha bush devil is the easiest of the alphas because for some reason, the biting is kind of buggy and doesn't always cause damage. It's just the fire we have to watch out for, which is fine for me because they always seem to spawn close to water anyway. When I got back to town, Erwin asked to buy my red nose off me, and whilst I didn't want to give it up, we can't say no to Erwin. I hadn't checked the recycling bin for a few days, so I poked my head in to find these googly eyes, which have to be the most cursed things ever, especially because they stay like that when you go to sleep. Safe to say, I removed them first thing on day 121. That thing is the stuff of nightmares. Let's try and forget about them and check the bulletin board, which had some pretty easy requests today, and these are great for building friendships. 
For some reason, I decided to use the bike to get around town today. And I'm still not any better at driving the damn thing, but I did then spend way too long doing donuts in the plaza. <laughs> when I went to say hi to Melvin, I couldn't help but notice this adorable Wombie bank in his shop. And I am not going home without this thing. But in a weird turn of events, Rain wanted to buy it off me for a profit. I pondered for a few seconds. I really didn't want to give it away, but in the end, the friendship was the most worth it. Aww. Before leaving the greenhouse, I did make sure to buy 300 wheat seeds because the giant field was soon to be ready. Even though I lost my Wombi bank, I did get this pink shelf in the recycling bin which has a Wombi bank on it, so I'm satisfied on the Wombi bank front. We were going to need a ridiculous amount of metal for all the sprinklers for the big field, so I finally caved in and went back to the mines on day 122. This pretty much went like most mining days, but this treasure room blessed me with a second hang glider. I'll be selling it, these are worth a fair amount of money. By the end of the day, I only found one ruby, but that wasn't really what we were here for. What I came for was the 262 iron ore and 147 copper ore, but of course, I couldn't help myself when it came to the other loot. With all that ore, I had work to do on day 123, which was basically just a day of smelting and crushing shiny stones. But I did take a break to do my first ever tractor harvest which took me embarrassingly long to figure out how to do, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I started to notice how hard it was to turn in this tractor, especially in this narrow of a field, so it was at this point that I made plans to widen the area later on to make it easier to manoeuvre. When I went to sell the harvest, I handed over the ruby which was worth a whopping 96,000 dinks. So I'm less mad about finding only one. But the crops, treasure, and random bits of clothing sold for over 1 million dinks? This kind of blew me away. I wasn't expecting that amount at all. I just kind of sat there and stared at the number in disbelief. On day 124, my first melons were ready. Which, I want to go on a quick tangent and ask if you guys ever just, like, chop a melon in half and eat it with a spoon? Like, the rind is a ready-made bowl, why would I dirty another bowl? And it's literally, like, the best and most satisfying. Anyway, we also had some sugarcane to harvest, so this was a good crop day. Then spent the entire afternoon out with a metal detector, because sprinklers need a wild amount of old springs and hot cylinders. On day 125, I handed a crafting request for two cooking tables for John, before depositing yesterday's riches into the bank. I dug up an amber chunk last night, which I can now sell for almost 40 grand. Then I picked up the redundant sprinklers on the green bean field so that I could upgrade them to the advanced ones because all that watering was starting to drive me nuts. It was even worth it to me to destroy a few crops to place those sprinklers, which was going to save me loads of time every day. But it's worth mentioning that you won't get the farming XP for watering, although at this level I'm not sure that even matters anymore. Returning to the main part of town, it suddenly bugged me that I didn't have paths under these hedges so I took a minute to fix it. Then, I don't know how it took me till now to realise the path border by the telepad was incomplete so I fixed that too. On day 126 I picked my green beans, and was relieved not to have to water quite so many crops. We were running out of hardwood, so it was time for a day of deforestation. Responsibly of course. On day 127 I found a beehive on my way to fight an alpha croco, but when I got there, a regular croco was already fighting it. I sat and watched because I wanted to see how this turns out, and of course the alpha absolutely demolishes the poor thing. Now it was my turn. Honestly, I'm still not really any better at combat, but we still got the W. Being a Sunday, I couldn't sell the beehive, so I turned my attention to Sally. We were at three whole hearts with her now and she still doesn't want to move in? It was on this day that I found out that in this version of the game, she's actually not able to become a resident just yet, so we're not going to see a salon on Bush Lagoon for quite some time. Towards the evening, I found out one of my quests to get a photo of a cockatiel and a moo was due today, so in true ADHD fashion, I rushed to get it done. A cockatiel flew by, so I tried to lure it to the moos. Except, these aren't moos, they're wary moos, and I didn't know these didn't count. It did make for some hilarious photos though, even if it is terrifying seeing a wary run at you in first person. On day 128, I got a mail from Clover. Apparently, she saw some green pants and th thought of me? I don't know how to feel about that. On the bulletin board today, I got a quest that I could definitely easily do. In fact, I had all the apples I needed in a chest. On my way past the town hall, I picked up the next agricultural vehicle license, which will allow me to till the ground. Now, I just had to save up 6,000 permit points for the final planting attachment. But since I still needed to make more sprinklers, I was out treasure hunting again. When I started this game, I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be short on old springs, but here we are. Obviously though, as soon as I found an amber chunk, I had to run it straight to the store to sell because we needed that coin and I didn't want to forget where I put it. On day 129, I traded loads of discs to Franklin for over 300 grand, then picked my first ever tomatoes. 
With my croc chores out the way, I dropped down in the mines for the day, finishing up with a fossil, three rubies, and over a hundred iron ore. This meant that on day 130, we had some smelting to do with our now four furnaces, though we did also have some melons to pick. Selling those, along with the mining treasures, got us around 350,000 dinks, so we paid off the last bit of town debt. I burned through all that iron ore much faster than I thought I would, so we went mining for the second day in a row. We didn't pass a single ruby, but this time we had over 200 iron ore, as well as 100 copper ore. I managed to smelt pretty much all of it by 9am the next day. A very productive morning because also our green beans had once again come to fruition, and the big wheat field was ready to go. This was perfect timing because I'd now made enough sprinklers to fill out this field. A massive relief. Then replanted the whole thing with sugarcane this time. I rounded off the evening with an alpha croco battle because it was far too close to my precious big field. Threat neutralised. On day 132, my bank balance crossed the 3 million mark, earning us 3,000 more permit points. There was yet another alpha croco to fight. God, I hate these things. Then on my return, Melvin had another wombie bank for sale. I snapped that cutie right up. Back in my yard, I cooked up a very satisfying dinner after that difficult fight, then gave my new wombie bank a home on this table in my house. I felt like the plaza was looking kinda empty, so I made a fountain, gave it some flower beds, and added a little seating area. On day 133, I added some festival lights as a finishing touch, and I love how this little bit turned out. I thought one of these would fit well at the telepad too, and whilst we're at it, it's time we add some street lights. Clover asked me for a picture of a beehive, but I didn't have one yet. Unfortunately, to do this, I had to eject one from its home. I felt kind of bad, but hey, at least we got the request done. Plus, we also got to sell it for 10 grand, hitting another journal milestone. I relaxed this Saturday afternoon with some bug catching. No, really, we went kind of hard with the bug catching. The problem with this is that John's is closed on Sundays, so here we go again making another wildlife display outside for now. I noticed today that for a good while now we'd only had Sally as a campsite visitor and nobody knew, so I did a bit of research to find that even though there are now five question marks in my pedia, we actually only had one person left to meet in this version of the game. The last person to meet was Ted Sally, and for now I just looked up his name, appearance, and when and where he would spawn so I'd know where to look. Unfortunately, it seems that he kinda can just be anywhere as long as it's after midday, so we'll just kinda have to happen upon him. To continue being productive, the day was spent treasure hunting as a villager asked for a photo of an amber chunk, and I could do with more old springs anyway. I ended digging one up that evening, so I snapped a quick pic of it then ran it home to be sold the next day. This fetched us a nice little 58 grand on day 135. Today was a big day because we finally purchased the final agricultural vehicle license, meaning that our tractor is now fully kitted out. It's going to be a while until we can test this on the big field, so I just worked on the littler ones for now, then spent what felt like an absolute eternity soaring up planks. Since I was excited about the tractor, I wanted to make a start on expanding the big field to make it double its current size, and after another alpha croco fight, this carried on into day 136, except I kind of forgot to recharge the compactor and allowed it to break. Distraught, I ran straight to Franklin with the parts to ask him to make me a new one, but not before sweetening him up first with some more shiny discs. Thankfully, we didn't need the compactor anymore to finish the field, so we still got to fence it off for the day. On day 137, I got my new compactor in the mail, so I could use it to clear more space for the perimeter path. I was low on wood because of all these paths, so I spent some time chopping down loads of the stuff and turned it all into planks. I finished off the path on day 138, and with that now built, I suddenly had the idea that I wanted to build our own town beach here at some point, so I started clearing some space for it. This was also a day of decoration. I added some plants around Melvin's shop because I thought the area needed some greenery, and in doing so uncovered this lucky amber chunk. This one sold for 68,000 dinks. I put down as many grass seeds as I could, then hunted down an alpha jackaroo and decided to make more cakes but it looks like something's a little bit wrong with this crafting recipe. I know this is changing in the next update. Day 139 was a day of yet more mining, and today I hit the milestone of having mined a thousand ores. Along with 4 rubies and 2 fossils, here's everything else I found underground that day. On day 140, I hit the milestone for having crushed 250 rocks, and all that stuff we got yesterday sold for nearly half a million dinks. Then, I kid you not, I spent the rest of the day smelting. On day 141, Milburn asked for a photo of Erwin. He's quite the celebrity, so I kinda get it, but it's still a little creepy. I decided maybe a close-up would be the way forward, and I'm not sure if I was just tired or delirious, but enjoy me Dying laughing.
We gave this absolute masterpiece to Milburn. I then wanted one of these for more of the villagers, but John was on the move and it was a bit of a struggle. Oh yeah. I got this cursed one of Franklin and a much better one after. Melvin was protected being inside his shop as I couldn't use the camera. Rain cooperated pretty well and Clover was unfortunately also in her shop. To do something actually productive this day, I went hunting for some old springs again and caught a brand new fish. Day 142 was a sugarcane harvest. When I went to sell my produce, I accidentally sold the anchovy I needed to donate for the museum, and I don't even think I noticed at this point. Bit of a rip, but hey, we got loads of money. I deposited a good amount of my cash into the bank to get another 3,000 permit points, but left enough in my pockets to be able to buy a load of new seeds for the new season. And it's worth noting that the seasonal crops do seem to run over to the new season by a few days each time, but it's okay, once these melons are ripe I can just add more corn seeds here. I didn't have enough sprinklers for the second half of the big field, so I decided to hold off on planting that half and just stick with the old half for now. But at least we can test out the new tractor attachments. The main thing holding me back yet again from making sprinklers were those damn old springs. So I was out with a metal detector on day 143 in the pouring rain. Jimmy's boat was actually quite near the shore today, so I decided to try and swim over. Big mistake. I didn't spot the shark until it was far too late. I tried to turn back, but I turned into a snack instead. What's worse is that when you're not in the mines, dying still sends you into the next game day. Massive yikes. I played things a bit safer on day 144 and mainly handled villager requests and took care of some farm chores. Then on day 145, I went mining again because I just seemed to love hanging out in dark caves. We had a pretty good start with the ruby right by the elevator, and our first treasure room for the day had a moo saddle which was a brand new discovery for me. I was looking forward to trying this out. The rest of it was a pretty average mining day with only two rubies, but we did get a few hundred ores. On day 146, I picked up the final ripened melons and replaced the spots with corn seeds with the intention of waiting till the whole field was ready to then harvest it for the first time. Melvin was selling this lovely little sofa so I grabbed it right away, then I had this fun sort of mess up with the dialogue with Milburn. I handed him some flour and he was literally like, thanks, now I can make some iron bars? Uh, how? But it was because he had two bulletin board requests, the other one being for some iron ore. The rewards came through correctly though. Since it was raining, Jimmy was visiting, and I took my rowboat for safety this time. I had a silly amount of old gears at home, so I brought some with me to sell in bulk for double, getting me 87,000 dinks. On day 147, I harvested quite a few crops, selling them all straight to John for 76 grand. This was another villager request day, as I had a bunch of permit points to farm for, because I decided now that I wanted to be able to buy every available permit before the end of this video. Oh, and uh, more springs. On day 148, I wanted to chill out with some bug catching, but then I remembered I still needed even more old springs. At this point it's starting to drive me bonkers, but the sooner I get enough for the sprinklers, the sooner I can stop. Thankfully, today was that day, with the big field finally being complete. I never want to touch that metal detector ever again. On day 149, I handed over 30 shiny discs to Franklin from all that metal detecting for a decent profit of over 300 grand. I deposited most of my money to get that next round of permit points, which I took straight to Fletch to buy the final vehicle license, meaning we're allowed to pilot helicopters. I now only had two licenses left, totaling 6,000 permit points, so I'm going to save my money till I've got them all before we ask for that commission so we can keep getting the 3,000 permit points for every million we build in the bank. On day 150, I went mining for money purposes, which was a decent day with 5 rubies and a fossil. I did leave reasonably early though, because the bug tipster let me know of a new bug out after dark, but I didn't have any luck finding it today. I got a total of about 500k from my selling spree the next day, then went out to fight an alpha bush devil with help from a local croco, which took me way too long, but I was back by the evening to collect a reward. On day 152, I bought the last tool belt license, so now we have that final hot bar slot. One more license to go. Being just over halfway through the video, I checked in with the friendships, and the only people we don't have five hearts with yet are Sally, who doesn't live here, Jimmy, who we can't befriend, and Milburn, who only had a quarter heart left, so I made this my priority. His request today was easy, just buying some camo pants from him, but this wasn't enough, so I'll have to try again tomorrow. Day 153 was my first corn harvest of the year and the big field of sugarcane was ready. Now that this field was completely empty I could prep the new half for its first planting, except it's Friday and rains is closed. 
All these crops gave me enough money for my balance to cross the 6 million mark, giving me the last permit points I needed to buy the final building license. Which doesn't give us anything in this version of the game, but I checked the town awards to confirm we now held every available license. Now that we were done building up money, I could ask Franklin to build us the helicopter. Hopefully it's easier for me to drive than the motorbike. On day 154, I got the helicopter in the mail. I'm pretty sure Franklin must also be some kind of wizard. Of course, the first thing I did was paint it pink before taking it for a little test flight, and it was actually surprisingly easy to fly. Rain was open today, so I grabbed a load of wheat seeds for the big field, then got in my tractor to retail the field and plant it. The rest of the afternoon was spent out on the helicopter seeing if I could find Ted Selly, but there was still no sign of him. On day 155, I wanted to start on the beach project. The first thing was to find an area where I could take some sand and not make it obvious or too ugly, and also not have it be too far away because it'll be tedious going back and forth with the wheelbarrow, which, spoiler alert, even with this distance, it was still a bit tedious. You can't take these through water, so my first job was to make a land bridge. I could have crafted a regular bridge, but I couldn't be bothered at the time. I filled up the wheelbarrow and took home my first load of sand before realising my compactor was dying, so I recharged it before it broke this time. It took till the next day to recharge, and whilst working on a permit point goal of travelling a distance on a vehicle, I spotted this move by the big field. I slapped that saddle right on and took it for a test drive. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. It was time to get back to the beach project, but uh... Overnight, my wheelbarrow seemed to empty itself. All I could really do was forget about it and carry on. I cleared a bit more area for sand, then began placing the tiles. It's looking weird for now, but trust the process. It was becoming obvious that this would take an extraordinary amount of time, so I cooked up some fairy bread, which will give us a little speed boost. On day 157, I bought another shovel, because carrying more spoons of dirt at once would help speed things up a bit. I also figured out that keeping all my shovels full means I can transport extra tiles of dirt in addition to the capacity of the wheelbarrow. On day 158, I made my first slip up with the bridge, which sucks because when you place the wheelbarrow back down, it'll always be empty. Aww. Even better, after refilling it, I immediately did it again. No! Nope. Uh. I wasn't about to let that happen a third time, so I finally built a proper bridge. On day 159, it occurred to me that I could break an empty wheelbarrow and carry it in my pockets to make this easier, and by this point I had five shovels with me, getting a little bit more efficient every day. Still taking a heckin' long time though. All this carried on through day 160, then on day 161 I decided to build a helipad as a spot to park the helicopter. Now that I'd finished carting around all that sand, I could start decorating the beach, but I had to wait for some furniture from Melvin to come in the mail, so I started clearing up my garden to be less of an overgrown mess. After collecting all my furniture from the mail on day 162, I could continue setting up the beach as a place of relaxation. There were no lounger type items that I could find, so this little campfire sitting area will have to do. I thought these fern pots were super cute, and Clover Shop didn't have any decoration around it, so I thought these would go well by her place. Then I headed to the beach to try and catch another entropy from the museum, which didn't take me very long, and once I donated it, I took a moment to have a walk around the building, because it occurred to me that I literally hadn't stepped foot near the exhibits at all. On day 163, John asked for a photo of a moo, which is a simple enough request since we have one of those. When I went to grab my camera, there was a wild one right by the elevator, so I snapped a quick pic of it. It got stuck on this screen, and I thought nothing of it at first, but when I checked my journal, it didn't seem to register the picture. I tried again with our friendly beach moo, but the same thing happened, and the photos weren't even in the photo album. This was clearly some kind of bug, so instead of continuing to waste my time on that, I watered my crops instead. Which, by the way, I'd been doing pretty much every day, but I thought it would be repetitive if I were to keep telling you this. The giant field of wheat was also ready, so I had the satisfaction of driving the tractor around to harvest it, even if badly, and this time replanted with sugarcane. I restarted my game before day 164 to try the photo quest again. The camera does still work, it just seems to freeze up when doing anything quest related. After lots of experimenting and frantically clicking, I finally saw the camera flash, and checking my album we now definitely had a photo of a moo but the quest progress didn't update. Oh well, we're gonna have to forget about this one. On this day, I decided Vaughn needed a friend. Well, I mean there are the Vombats, but no one of the same species. I kept the name Beatrice and popped her in her new pen. Then, for the afternoon, I reattempted my goal of trapping one of each Diggo, starting with this one near home, and after a bit of practice, I managed to send it off. I found a second one near home, but it got away into the water so I left it alone, and found another in a different location, sending it off successfully this time. I found the last one I needed out by the big field, 
It took me a minute to get it off the bridge, and this one seemed to be particularly feisty. I mean, I would be too if I were trapped in a tiny cage, but we got there in the end. On day 165, I had a few crops to harvest, which got us nearly 80,000 dinks. I replanted the wheat with sugarcane as we're near the end of autumn, and this was the only crop in the store to cross into the next season. Then, the rest of the day was spent flying around the island looking for that last NPC. We had no luck finding him today, but I did find a pearl for the first time, and a king prawn to donate to the museum. On day 166, I cooked up a load of bush lines for a shipment quest for Fletch before adding a little cosy seating area next to the bank. With having multiple kegs, I was now out of wattle flowers, so I went gathering for a while, and managed to successfully chase down a shark. I also poked at any jellyfish close to land, because it occurred to me I'd never made a jelly brew before. It took me 166 days to notice this pond near the back of my house. This gave me the idea to turn it into a swimming pool, so I started by cutting down all the trees today, then in the evening, I started moving the dirt, making it no more than two tiles deep at the deep end. The dirt moving carried on into day 167, then once that was done, I lined it with cement paths, which, trying to put them on something two tiles deep was quite hard after I removed the random pillars. I figured out to get the path down, I had to jump and click at exactly the right time. I know this is weird, but if it works, it works. On day 168, I put down some hardwood paths at the poolside to contrast the light grey of the cement. I did a little shopping at Melvin's, then remembered I was carrying poop in my pockets for him. With the pool basically done, I spent the afternoon out looking for Ted again. Where the heck is this dude? On day 169, I found a reddit post showing someone making buildings out of dirt, bridges and paths, and I wanted to give it a go. My idea was to build a little garage for my tractor, so that it had a home by the big field. This is when I found out you can only dig holes of a certain depth, then it won't get any deeper, so you can actually get unlimited dirt this way. Really wish I knew this for the beach project. It took a bit of fiddling to get the bridge in place, and I wasn't so sure about the look yet. I carried on for now and slept on it, and after commissioning a gacha machine the next morning, I decided I hated it enough to tear it all down and use the bridge elsewhere instead. On day 171, I got the gacha machine, which cost 25 grand to get something from. I wasn't really sure how this worked yet, and I didn't know at this point it takes an entire day to spit something out, but I still went off and fought an alpha jackaroo for now, as well as clearing up another fallen satellite. I hadn't actually seen one of these for a while. Back at home, I've realised I forgot to add some lights to the pool area, and thought these tiki torches would be a nice touch. And lastly, I added a little rock path off the fruit orchard to get to it. On day 172, I got a furnace from the gacha machine, then for some reason decided to cook one of each dish I hadn't made yet. I actually really messed up this day, because I thought when I was recording this that this was day 200. This is because when I did the 100 day series of Stardew Valley, day 200 was then on winter 4th, but in Dinkum, everything starts a season ahead, so we're actually due to end on spring 4th. On this day, I ran around to give a tour of what I thought my town had ended up like, and it actually took me until I scripted this day to realise my mistake, so I guess we can call this one a bit of a progress update? This actually gave time for the new housewarming update to come out, meaning the remaining days we get to explore some of the new things the game has to offer. On day 173, Fletch told me about the three new houses we can now build. The main reason these were added is so that co-op players can also have a house of their own, but really, you can use them for whatever you want. I picked up the first deed, then did the thing where I paid it off immediately, meaning I could pick up another. I did this again to get the third house deed too, but left this debt because slowly over time, other villagers will donate, so that when you go to pay it off, the amount should actually be lower. I put the first two by the big field, then the third I set up as like a pool house. Aside from some planks, I had all the materials, so it didn't take me long to get each house's stuff done. By this point, it was the afternoon, so I went on the hunt for Mr. Ted again. On day 174, Sally was visiting, and the inside of her tent was looking more salon-like. She asked me for a harlequin butterfly, then I hopped in the chair for a quick style change, picking up this cute little bun look, although I wasn't so keen on how it looked with a hat, so I asked her to change it back. I returned shortly after with the butterfly she requested, and before even giving it to her, she said she was wanting to move in. I wasted no time in picking up that deed, putting it a bit further back between those two new houses, and depositing the materials right away as I was excited to see what the new building would look like. On day 175, I sprinted straight to the salon to check out what it looked like, and I think it's freaking adorable. I brought all of my furniture with me as well, as I wanted to at least somewhat decorate those new houses, using what I had of the Eastern set in one house, and the Nordic set in the neighbouring one. I definitely forgot about the pool house though. To make the new buildings fit in more, I connected up some paths, 
then noticed the sugar cane was ready. So I hopped on the tractor and harvested it, partway through realizing I don't yet have any seeds and rain closes at four. I finished the field and ran over to John's to sell all that sugar cane to fund a purchase of almost 600 carrot seeds, which because I was clicking fast enough, it meant rain didn't have time to leave her shop. I doubt she was too pleased about it, but I managed to get everything I needed. Then when I went to replant, I kinda ended up in a little predicament. <laughs> oh no. Thank goodness we can break the tractor to pick it up and got the carrots planted successfully. On day 176, I realized now that Sally was a resident, I need to get her friendship to Max before the end of the video. So I went to chat to her and then bought a hat from her. We have a heart and a quarter left. The old tomato plants were also now dead, so I replaced them with some sugarcane. I started day 177 on a bug catching spree, whilst looking for a fly for Sally, and in return got a rattan lamp. John was selling a house customization kit for the first time. These cost 25,000 dinks and are now required to customize the exterior of player houses, meaning it's no longer free from fletch. Here's the look I went with for the first house. These kits are single use, so I'll have to wait for more to come up for sale before I do the other houses. Here's when I realized I'd not yet asked Franklin for a couple of the remaining vehicles. So today, I started with the jet ski. On day 178, I got that jet ski in the mail, which I thought might look good parked at the beach. Of course, I took it for a test drive, and in my opinion, out of all the vehicles, this was by far the easiest to control. John was selling another house customization kit, so I gave the second house a new look. As none of the buildings in town looked the same, I wanted to make sure the houses followed suit. Now that Franklin was free, I commissioned my last vehicle from him, the lawnmower. I know it's not really a vehicle, but it was in that same colour category, so I just rolled with it. I then found the new wild animal, the frilly. Curious about what it might drop, it took a chainsaw to it because I didn't have a spear in my hotbar and I got a bit of a shock. I found out they dropped thunder sacks, which will be used to craft… something. The rest of this day went by trying to look for a new bug, but I couldn't find it. On day 179, I tested out the new lawnmower, which felt a bit annoying to move, but apparently it stops the long grass growing back. Today, Sally asked me for a blue moon butterfly, nice and easy, and on fulfilling her request, she called me a bloody legend. Erwin was selling a dog house for the first time, so I bought one and placed it in my garden in the hope that the doggo might hang out closer to home. Spoiler alert, it did not. I hadn't tried for a few days, so I went out in the helicopter for the afternoon looking for Ted Selly again. At some point during the making of this video, I got a comment pointing out that not all of my animals had sleeping places. I kind of forgot and this didn't sit right with me, so I made it my mission on day 180 to rectify this, starting with the chicken area, because I had 7 chooks and only 1 coop. To make sure there was enough space to run around after adding all the houses, I extended the fence backwards, and I feel like it looks really satisfying with all these lined up in a row like that. I repositioned and placed two large animal stalls in the other fenced area, which kind of pushed one of them out of the pen, but this was easily sorted with the vombat whistle. I set up a brand new pen out by the big field for the pleeps. And by the way, I gotta point out the new look of the animal dents. These really did get a glow up. I can't bring the pleeps over just yet, as I don't have the right whistle, so I planned on waiting for it to pop up in Irwin's, not knowing they don't actually exist. On day 181, I filled up the new silo before buying a green jacket from Sally, and trying to find Ted Selly yet again. Come on dude, you're taking the pee now. On day 182, I bought the final custom house kit, so I could redecorate the outside of the pool house. I wanted a sort of pastel yellow situation, but when I confirmed the changes, it seemed to come out green. Is that just me? It was raining on day 183, so I went out in search of the new flower, the desert pea, which only comes out when it's raining, and are quite uncommon. I added it to my garden for another pop of colour, then checked Irwin's for the non-existent pleep whistle. I was happy it was raining, as I was recently getting too lazy to water the smaller fields that didn't have any sprinklers, so I decided it was time to add some. As expected, I was short on old springs, so I went out with the metal detector for the day, which was fine having had a decent break from having to do this. On day 184, the giant field of carrots was ready. This harvest of 1,728 carrots sold for a whopping 944,000 dinks. I popped over to Rain's when she opened, and she was selling carrot seeds again. So of course, this is what I opted to replant the giant field with. On day 185, I wanted to check the mines for updates, and now we have a bit of info displayed in the elevator. I was down here for iron and also quartz because that's now down here too, but I did also find this weird bat statue, which I couldn't seem to pick up or interact with, 
So if you happen to know what this does, please do let me know down in the comments. Another thing I noticed were these glow bugs flying around, but I didn't have my net so that's a thing for next time. And in the treasure rooms I found some mystery crop seeds which are for summer so we don't get to see what these make. Unfortunately I ended up dying to a bush devil setting me on fire so I decided to cut my losses and go home. On day 186 I went looking for an alpha bush devil, but when I got to the location it literally wasn't there. After two in-game hours of looking I gave up and left. This was kind of a shame because it was Sally who posted this one, but I tried to make up with it with another favour, buying another piece of clothing from her. I went and sold my ruby, then as soon as it hit the afternoon, it was Ted hunting time again, and no we did not find him. On day 187, I accidentally left the game on pause when I went AFK so literally all I did this day was look for Ted again. On day 188, the fishing tips just spotted a new fish off the northern coast in the early mornings, so I went straight over there to check it out. It wasn't long before I found and caught it, the fish being a Murray cod. I also found this creepy looking sea star which I donated to the museum along with the fish. You can probably guess what we did later that day and it was not successfully finding Ted Selly. On day 189, the rain reminded me that I still needed to look for more old springs for sprinklers. When I got back home I was surprised to find a shark in my swimming pool. What the actual heck? There's a shark in my swimming pool. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what to make of it at first, but I got rid of it because I didn't want to be chumped when taking a dip. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. That afternoon, I was out on the helicopter again when the unthinkable happened. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, I found him. Oh my god. Finally, we found him. He can't move to the island, but we can befriend him. So I asked if he had a job for me and he wanted to buy my five miners helmets. What? <laughs> Of course, we took the offer. Now that I found him, I could browse his wares. He had this bat zapper, which was new for the update, and this is what the thunder sacks are for. And also, he had these new alpha weapons, which I definitely don't have the parts for yet. For now, I marked him on my map, grabbed the parts for the bone bow, and came back and asked him to craft me that, along with some arrows. I only had the stuff for 12 arrows though, so I wanted to save them for the right occasion. On day 190 I regained my courage enough to re-enter the mines again as I had a bunch of keys and wanted some more iron. By the evening, I picked up three rubies and all these goodies. A pretty standard mining day, but I did forget my net again so no bug today. On day 191 I commissioned a second helicopter. You'll see why later. My ruby sold for almost 250k and one of them was our 50th, so we hit another journal milestone. Since I had the money, I bought another mine pass, specifically just to catch that glow bug. That is the most expensive bug catching session we've ever had. After donating it to the museum, I tested out the bone bow on a nearby frilly, and it didn't do a huge amount of damage, so I quickly switched back to the chainsaw instead. On day 192, I finally remembered about adding a path to the pool house before harvesting my carrots and replanting some sugarcane. I collected my almost a million from the carrots from John, and deposited it straight into the bank. Then, for a second time, I forgot to hit pause when I went AFK. On day 193, I was on my way back from catching a butterfly for Sally, when before I even gave it to her, she reached five hearts. She's our last resident, so that's that goal completed. Erwin still obviously wasn't selling a pleat whistle, so I decided to find another method. I thought the guitar worked like a universal whistle, then I could just call the Vombats back to their enclosure afterwards. Problem is, I kinda sold all the guitars I found, so that idea kinda goes out the window. The next solution was to bring the Vombats over here to live instead, so I picked up the pleep dens and put them where the Vombat stalls were. After I lured the Vombats across the bridge to their new home, it felt a little bit cramped because the animal stalls are large and in charge, so I extended this pen a little bit more to have a separate sleeping area, concluding the animal upgrade project. On day 194, I began a hunt for a bug that apparently hangs out in the plains all day according to the bug tipster. I ran around with my bug book open for the entire day, but I didn't find anything new. Day 195 was a rainy day, so I planned to bring some of the many old parts I had to sell to Jimmy and Bolt. He was courteous enough to hang out by the shore today in easy reach, and received almost half a million for my items. Whilst I was there, I spent some permit points on a pot of gold paint and the golden bush devil statue. I returned home and put that gold paint on the second helicopter, then flew it over to the bank's roof to permanently park it there because there's no getting it down once I jump off. 
I did this because I felt like Milburn would be the type to have a gold helicopter on his roof. Definitely our most expensive decoration. I then went to use my own helicopter for something, but to my horror it had vanished from the helipad, and there was no icon on the map for it either. This made me initially think that asking for a new helicopter deletes the old one, but I did go check all my chests first with no success. Rest in peace helicopter I guess. On day 196, I tried to move on from that and went back to looking for that unknown bug. Whilst running around, I found this shark trying to become a land shark. Like literally what the heck is going on here? It seemed to be struggling so I took a chainsaw to it to put it out of its misery. The rest of the day was very uneventful, just literally running back and forth failing to find any new bugs. On day 197, Erwin asked me for a photo of Melvin. I got this nice one of him waving, but then I remembered all the fun we had with those close-ups, and I was torn on which option to go with, the nice or the kinda unhinged. We ended up going with a close-up, and Erwin thought it was a great photo and offered to pay me 4,000 dinks for it. A man of great taste. He was also after a shipment of bottle brushes, so my afternoon was occupied gathering those in the pine forests. On day 198, I got a mascot torso in the mail. I put it on immediately as I was curious about what it was and decided it was a look I wanted to keep. Whilst I was pondering for a moment, I noticed that John was in a little bit of a pickle. For some reason, he couldn't decide what he was doing and was running back and forth into and out of that crop field as if he couldn't path his way to the shop. I stood back and watched for a while in amusement to see if he'd figured things out, but he kinda didn't. Thankfully, he wasn't completely broken, as when I walked over there, he eventually made his way over. I then remembered I hadn't furnished the pool house, and even though it's not very pool housey, I had a good few pieces of the dainty set that I wanted to use. This is by no means meant to look like a cohesive finished product, I just wanted the room to be less than empty. With my brand new top, I wanted a new hair colour to match, so I went with this turquoise situation and liked it a lot better, and restyled into a ponytail too. On leaving the salon, I did one last look in the water by the beach, and there it was! My helicopter, in a box, in the water. I have no idea how exactly this happened, but I'm thankful to have found it. Thank god. On day 199, I was rudely interrupted by a wary whilst checking my mail. I used a chainsaw to put it in its place and accidentally destroyed a bush in the process. Nothing to see here. Last season's corn died off, so I cleared that up and left the field bare because this one didn't have any sprinklers. And after some final town prep for the day, I went out to fight our last alpha of the video receiving our first special alpha drop from the new update, an alpha scale. Day 200 was official tour day, but before I start with that, I wanted to show one more feature that I forgot about till now. You can now use paint to colour code chests. But now, on with the tour. I start with the house, but honestly, this looks almost the same really. And other than some flowers and the empty doghouse, the garden didn't really change much either because I suck at coming up with ideas. We decorated clovers with those fern pots, we have the new weather station over here too. Then, just past the crop fields we have the fruit orchard which is now fully grown. This is right by the plaza, where we added that fountain seating area, and of course Melbourne's gold helicopter. The bush devil statue also got an upgrade. Moving on to the animal area, we have the campsite first which looks exactly the same and is a little bit redundant at the moment. Then, we have this pen here which now just belongs to the pleeps. They still live across the way from the chooks who now all have a house of their own. Further along from there, we have one of the big changes which is the brand new beach. Wait, what's that mangrove tree doing here? This was definitely not ever a mangrove. Nope, not at all. Do not perceive those trees. Anyway, here's our town beach, complete with jet ski rental, campfire area, and resident moo. Then over past the helipad and across the bridge we have the new area, home to a new giant crop field complete with tractor, and the new bomba area. We've also got a new little house, this one has the eastern theme. Then next door is the brand new salon with our latest resident, Sally. And finally in this section we have the second new house with a Nordic theme, but this has given me more waiting room vibes if I'm honest. I hopped onto the helicopter to do a flyover tour, and I think I'm actually really happy with what the little town has developed into. In doing that, I realised I forgot to show off the pool area, so here it is, along with its new house. We'll call this the dainty pool house. Now for the progress check. We only have a few of each type of creature left, and I think these are mostly quite rare ones, and it's quite hard finding the creatures you have to die for as well. As for the people, firstly, ignore the four question marks. Those NPCs I don't think exist yet, so we've met everyone we can for now, 
and everyone has five hearts of friendship, except for Jimmy, who you can't befriend, and Ted Selly, who is rare, can't move to the island, and we only saw him once. Under my details, here are the level updates. We made a fair amount of progress, except in fishing, which is unsurprising. And also, we have every single license the game currently has to offer. Finally, we have the animal friendship, which has improved significantly, except for Doggo who just refuses to come home. As we saw earlier in the video as well, we managed to trap and send off one of each colour Diggo, fix all of the Telly Towers, and build ourselves a big enough farm to use the tractor with, meaning we successfully completed all five of our goals. I can't believe how much we accomplished in 200 days. I feel like, at this point, I've done a good portion of what the game has to offer. There are definitely a few things I'll have missed, but in the current game version, I definitely don't feel that I have enough to do for another 100 days. This isn't going to be the final end of this series though, as I'll be revisiting this once again once the developer has put out a few more updates in the future that we can explore together. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love if you could show your support with a like and subscribe. 100 day style videos I think will always be a part of my channel, so if you enjoy this kind of content, I'd recommend checking out my Stardew Valley Expanded series, and sticking around for future playthroughs of more Stardew Valley, along with potentially some other games. Thank you so much for watching, a special thanks to the members of the Berry Basket, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!